We're Just My DIY. I'm Daniel. I'm Jay-Z. And we're here to show you how we framed a picture from Jamaica in a soundboard picture frame. How did you come up with this idea? <laughs> so, as you may know if you get any art internationally, especially at a corner tent, it doesn't... On a beach. On a beach. My. <laughs> right near the beach. <laughs> So yeah, so if you pick up a canvas from a tent right near the beach, wow. then you will find that it doesn't really adhere to normal dimensions. So this canvas was going to need to have its own custom frame anyway. And when I started Googling for inspiration about music type frames, I saw these amazing sound boards, but they weren't frames. But then I thought, what if? There was a soundboard. Picture frame? Yes! So, took us four tries, but we finally got it right. And we love it. We do. So watch this video to find out how we did it. First for our soundboard picture frame, we'll have to take these boards and cut them down into varying heights so we can sand them and stain them. Before we do that, one big tip. It is very important to look at what kind of wood you're purchasing. We started out with this common board because let's be honest, it is so much cheaper. But when we started cutting it, we realized that this board is neither square nor straight and really wouldn't work for this project. Precision is key if you're going to try to do a soundboard picture frame. And so we had to go back to Home Depot and get some nice pine wood. This was about five times more than the common board, but it is straight, it is square, the edges are beautiful. So we got the pine board, which came in the eight foot, some poplar boards that came in three foot. These are hobby boards, and these will work much better for this project. We begin by setting a stop block for each of our varying heights in order to create consistency in the cuts and volume. That's because we actually need 244 blocks for the finished frame, cut in quarter inch increments. We cut them from one and a half inch all the way down to a quarter inch, and we ended up cutting way more than we needed to ensure that we had enough variety to create the ultimate aesthetic that we were working for. To finish it though, we used a quick sanding process to take off the frayed edges without trying to lose the sharpness of the blocks naturally had. Full disclosure, this isn't the first time that we tried to make this frame, but live and learn. So this time we decided to lay everything out before we went any further to be sure that we had enough blocks of each of the various sizes and be sure that no two pieces at the same height were touching. Once we had enough blocks to go around the full frame, we got really specific and started making little tweaks here and there, looking at it from all angles. Next, we grabbed the canvas to look at it in place and be sure that everything fit and that we didn't mess up again. And then, uh-oh. This is a special edition of DIY Update, and we have some late breaking news. Just a few moments ago, something went terribly, terribly wrong with the soundboard frame project. Let's go to Roy G. Biv in the field, who has the details. Thanks, Anita. I'm here in the workshop where a heinous DIY crime has been committed. The Just My DIY team was assembling the frame when they realized they were a full half inch off. The culprit has been identified. She has confessed on tape. Let's go to that footage now. I knew it could happen, but I didn't think it was going to happen to me. I knew that using two different kinds of wood could result in some discrepancies, but I swear I measured. They looked the same. But they were not. The pine measured in at a 1.47. The poplar, 1.52, and when put together in volume, that resulted in an uneven assembly. I never thought I'd have to say this, but she needed better wood. And this is Roy G. Biv, reporting for DIY Update. Back to you, Anita. That'll do it for this edition. I'm Anita Redo. Upon realizing the error of our ways, we go to correct. We cut some more wood. We sand some more wood. 
and then we replace the poplar with a freshly remade pine. To contrast the bright colors of the Jamaican art, we went with a matte black stain without the poly since this is an indoor piece. We tried the stain with poly before and did not feel it had the appeal we desired. We stained the sides initially to leave a place to hold them and not mess up the wet stain. Letting it soak in for a short, wiping off the excess created a consistent appearance. To continue learning from our earlier mistakes, we are now placing the blocks on coins to prevent the stain from gluing the blocks to the board on which they rest to dry. And by the magic of cameras, the tops are now finished. While we're waiting for all of the stain to dry, we are... That is not going to help. <laughs> While we're waiting for the stain on the blocks to dry, we need to start prepping our backboard. So we have a really thin piece of wood, kind of like what this is just sitting on right now that we have stained black, but now we need to build the frame for the back of it so it actually has some rigidity to it. Uh, so it's gonna be cutting that down and then attaching it to the board, which will be super quick, so we'll just do that in montage. Now that we're ready for our final step of our project. It's assembly time, so we have our backboard already, and now Daniel's going to tell you how we're actually going to get these blocks onto this board. So all we need to do is set our inside frame down in place, super glued and all, and we'll individually, by hand, meticulously place all of these in place without the excess of plants and such by using a super glue wood glue combo. So we're using the super glue to provide that immediate clamp for us, and then the wood glue will cure overnight and ensure extra adhesion. Of course, this isn't all the glue we have. We're going to need a little bit more than this. Which is why I'm going to the store and bought heat glue down the frame. You see. Bye. <laughs> For the inside frame, we used quarter inch hobby boards that we stained in the same black color. We did this half because we needed to fill some expected gaps between the art and the blocks, and the other half so we could actually have something to keep our blocks aligned with when we started to glue them down. The gluing process was actually pretty simple, but we did have a few key learnings that we want to share with you guys. We ran a long strip of wood glue along the length of the row because we knew that would take a little bit longer for it to get tacky, and obviously that one takes overnight to set. So for the super glue, we actually applied it around the entire bottom of each block immediately before we were about to place the block on the board. Once we did that, we held the block down for a good 10 seconds to really allow that super glue to grab. So now that our wood glue is cured, we are all set, as the glue is set, for putting the picture into the frame. How are we gonna do that? We're all set as the glue set. <laughs> we are set like glue. <laughs> <laughs> so that was intentional. <laughs> so like us, the glue is set, and we're ready to finish this project and get our picture in the frame. Jay-Z, what are we doing? So we are going to use the command picture hanging strips for this. 
This is really just a formality. It's a custom frame. It's a really tight fit. Uh, it would probably stay in with or without anything, but we are going to use these for like little Velcro strips. So let's do it. So there it is, the soundboard frame hung happily in its place. We hope you guys had as much fun watching this video as we did making it. So don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and check out our list of products down below. Absolutely. And if you're not watching this on our website, head over to JustMightDIY.com for more backstories, projects, and more. Till next time. Bye.